Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and clear. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the earth, and the roll is called, and yonder I'll be there.
song that is. The love of God is greater, greater still, greater still than any man can ever imagine. How God would forgive us and love us in spite of our sin and forgive us and keeps on loving us. It's an amazing story, the love of God. Well, Lorna, how are we coming here with any of the comments and things? Well, we've got Lori, which is watching. Good evening, she says. Hi, Lori. Jim, Jane and Jim Ralston. Wonderful. Good to hear You're you. Always with us. Thank you. Um, Marjorie McDougall is watching. She says, good evening. And Linda Wells is so happy to be singing again with you, Linda and, um, and Wilson. Um, <coughs> Linda Wells, I mean. Uh, Christine Placido. Placido. Um, hello, Pastor John and Lorna. Hi, Christine. Um, Welcome again from Barry. And Lynette. Lynette John and Lorna, and glad to have you back. Donna, nice to be back. Mom, I'm here just a little late. She's like you've been celebrating her birthday. A happy birthday today. <laughs> She turned really old today. Ah, uh, she did not. Didn't she? she just, oh. No, she's getting younger. <laughs> she's getting, time. she's got she's, ahead of she's me. She's reversed. Barely, yeah. Um, and Marjorie is still watching. Uh, Judith Gal is watching. Hi, Judy. We're all going to be home tomorrow, hopefully. So um, maybe for two or three Lee days. Weaver wants to know if you're in Thamesford. Lee, yes, we are. We're at the cottage right now, Lee. And so Judy says hi, John Lauren. And Kat Katrina Doe says, that's Kathy Doe's. Oh, nice, Kathy. Hope, I hope you had a nice relaxed break, although I know yes. you're all doing this. Yes, we do. And um, Stanley Ben here. <coughs> Stanley, you know well, yes, yes, Stanley's been part of our sing along yeah. almost from the very beginning. And on the take five, he's never missed one of the take five. So good well, to see you, Pastor. 12 on right now. So good. Edith Rizal, wonderful things. Edith, good. Over in Woodstock, so that's a lot of places again already that are tuning in. And uh, as you know, we uh, we took uh, three or four weeks off there because uh, well, summertime. We just thought maybe everybody wouldn't be listening; they'd be out and around. So, uh, anyways, this is our first week back, and we're just going to measure. If you're watching, if you'd push like, that'll give us a bit more of an in, an idea of how much you want us to continue. Otherwise, we may slow down a bit, maybe every second week or something like that. So if you do like the things, please hit the like button. And if you really like them, share it with somebody else, because there's so many people that need that word of encouragement from the scriptures and from these, these beautiful songs. Um, we have this uh, thing again where we say we want you to guess. Now, if you've guessed before and you've won, then we're going to disqualify you for couple of weeks because uh, we want some other people to be able to get one of these books as well and give them a shot at it. Some of you are really fast at um, being able to get those fingers there. So first person that gets this, you get one of our books if you give us your address to mail to.
Did you say someone guessed that? I don't know who guessed it first, but Donna looks like she might have, Lori might have, and Sharon. So we'll see which oh, one comes in first on you. Okay, when we review this a little later, sometimes the timing is a bit different. When we grab the first one, then we find out later actually by the timing on it, somebody else beat by two or three seconds or whatever. So we'll, we'll find, find that out shortly and, and then be able to announce. And then we'll send you off. We'll, I'll send you off an email asking for your address. Please don't put it on Facebook. Send it to me by private message. You don't want everybody in the world knowing your address. Okay, that's just just the way it is. Um, well, that's that's pretty good. If three or four people got that, but not everybody knows knows that song, of course. Now, if you got the words this afternoon from us, then you know our next song is "There's Power in the Blood." So that I will be able to sing it without screeching and you will be able to too. So the second verse goes like this. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's side. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power. There's wonderful power in the blood.
comments there again from um, some of the uh, folk. Jeremy Chapman, Ross Anderson. Um, he says hello. And Jeremy says good to see you back. Um, Cletus Clems, we'll say to you.
that really is the expression of our heart this evening on this beautiful summer's day here at Maple Grove Camp and Conference and Retreat Center. We're thanking you, Lord, for all of your provisions and all of your blessings. We really don't deserve it, Father, but you created us and made us, you knew us from the very beginning. And so, Lord, we understand that love and we just want to express our love in return, but as well we want to say, we need you. We need you now more than ever before. As the world seems to go a little topsy-turvy, as things are turning upside down, and things seem to be going backwards in so many parts of the world, we say, Lord, our faith is anchored in you. We don't put it in man's wisdom. Our faith is not in man's wisdom. Our faith is not in man's ability. It's not in even his science or his accomplishments, but our faith and our hope is in you, in you, in you alone. So we thank you and praise you. And then, Father, we thank you that you reach down your hand not just to save us, but you reach down your hand to heal us. And not only to heal us, but to restore us. And if our body breaks down, you're still the restoring God. And so I pray, Lord, for those this evening that are watching, maybe during the course of the week as they're watching. I pray that as we reach our hand toward the camera, I pray, Lord, that people will stretch forth their hand to God and say, Lord, touch me, heal me, save me, cleanse me, restore my life again, restore hope back in my life again. And for those, Lord, that are discouraged and depressed and despondent, I ask in the precious name of Jesus that the power of God will reach into their home right now and into their hearts and wherever they're watching and that somehow or another a new hope, a fresh hope will come back again. And for those, Lord, that have given up on the church aren't even thinking of going back, I pray, Lord, that there will be a restoration in their mind that the church, the building, the place where they worship is important and they need to be there this Sunday and every Sunday. And somehow, Lord, that they'll again be able to pick up some type of normalcy in their lives that allows them to have strength and power and favor when others around them are falling apart. So thank you, Father, for what you're doing, and thank you for Jesus. And we just simply say again as we sing the chorus. More than ever before, Lord, I need tuning in. If you'd push the like button, that'll help us to know that you want us to continue. And that that's part of me going over the statistics from week to week. And we've gone all the way from 150 or 200 people up to 700 people that have been watching it sometime. Um, 
we have two or three booklets that we give away, and this one is called The Prosperity Message. And man, this message has gone around the world, and it's so false. And this little book will help you to sort out some of the scriptures that speak about uh, the end times when false gospels will come. And the Apostle Paul in Galatians says, it's not really another gospel. There is only one gospel. And Paul says, there will be false gospels, but they're not really the gospel. There's something else. And the book we wrote a little while ago, Where Were You When the Lights Went Out? Man, this could happen at any time. When you look at the hacking that's going on around the world and how they can come in and they literally hack into banks and all of your money's gone in seconds. They can hack into the power grid. All our lights are gone. Everything that we know is stable, is wiped out. This book will be a great one if you want even to buy some of these copies. They're $3 each. But it's a great track to hand out. One of our friends has handed out dozens of those uh, to people that she knew needed the Lord. Then if you're involved in church at all and you're ever wondering how does the church stay on track and organized, this is a book that I wrote about 15 years ago when I was teaching at Canada Christian College and it's called The Effective Church Board Member. And uh, it, it, it'd it be a good book, especially in these days, just before all the church fights destroy the church. That one will help keep things on track. Uh, recently, I wrote a book and had it printed. It's called Nobody Asked Me But Here's My Two Cents. And uh, if anyone knows me, it's such an appropriate title because uh, I really have some strong opinions that I want to express. I believe that they're Bible-based, and so that's the way I state them. And I'm not there to argue with people. Other people can have their opinions. That's fine. But I have a few thoughts that come from the Word of God after studying it for all of these years of ministry, 61 plus now. And uh, so this little booklet, it's got a lot of things in it. It's for evangelists, it's for people, it's for somebody that wants and needs a little uplift and humor. Lots of good things in this book. Um, we're offering it again this evening and we're just simply saying if you wanted to make a donation to our ministry, our ministry is called the Country Parson Ministry. And uh, we've been going for many, many years now, as you know. But we need finances to keep doing the things we're doing. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I mailed out a bunch of copies of this. And the, mail, the postage was $100 just for the postage. So uh, if you wanted to help us in that way, that would be very appreciated. And any donation uh, that you send our way, either in an envelope or if you wanted to do it by e-transfer, that would be great. We'd really appreciate it. Praise the Lord. Pardon? This uh, song is uh, one of the great favorites. It's come into the church since I was born, and uh, it's become very quickly became one of the favorites. It's How Great Thou Art. So you want to sing along with this? That'd be good. <laughs>
when Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration Well, the earth does too. We have flowers out on our porch here that are just simply amazing. Lorna's got the green thumb and she just keeps picking away at them and cleaning them up every day and keeping the bugs off them. But it's part of God's creation and to stare into some of those flowers and see what God's doing is really amazing. Well, I think we have our final song here for this evening. And I want to leave you on a positive note because the Christian gospel is very positive of anything that's happening around you. Listen, listen carefully. Read the last page. The last page of any book is always so important. I, I, I've even got a really good last page on this one because I think it's very important to have a word of encouragement. So here we go on this song. I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory how he gave his life on Calvary Savior forever. 
has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory.